Okay, 5.1.1. It's a whole new section, and I warned you the hard stuff was coming, and this is the hardest stuff. This is like the, the next few weeks get to be the hardest stuff. Okay, it's not impossible, but it will take your full attention. You're going to have to memorize some stuff that isn't just like intuitive for you. Like you're going to have to do some brute force memorizing to get through these next few units. Um, and some of these are going to make total sense to you, uh, but some of them aren't. Basically, it's a lot of substitution. So like, for instance, you remember how when we had tangent of an angle, that was the y over the x? Does that, do you remember that? You had to memorize that, right? And sine was which one? Sine was y, and cosine was which one? x. So really, do you get how tangent then is, if y is sine, and x is cosine, then whenever you see a tangent of an angle, you could replace it with sine of the angle over tangent. Sorry, sine over cosine of the angle. I'll say that again. If you had tangent of an angle, like tangent of 57 degrees, if your tangent button was broken, you could instead do sine of 57 and divide it by cosine of 57. That ratio will hold up. Tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, so that is one of the categories that you have to know. I think that one would make sense to you because you already knew that sine was y and cosine was x. So then tangent would be y over x or sine over cosine. Okay, so th what does that mean? That means if you had a problem like, for instance, uh, cosine times tangent, if you know that tangent is really the same as, instead of tangent, what could I put? Sine over cosine, then do you get, I could put this over 1 and go cancel, cancel, and the answer is sine. It's getting really kind of uh, abstract, but... If tangent is sine over cosine, here is a typical R2 level question. Cosine times tangent is what? If tangent was sine over cosine. So you're going to have this big list of things you have to have memorized, and you can go, okay, so what could I put in for tangent? Oh, yeah, tangent is sine over cosine. And then you, out of your memory banks, you write down, sine over cosine, and then you go, okay, now the cosines can cancel. Cool. And that's usually what it comes down to is putting something in and then making some stuff cancel, and then once that cancels, what's left? Sine. So the answer is just sine. So the answer to this is, what's it equal to? It's equal to sine. And that would be the end, and you're done. Okay, I'll give you another one that's like that. Uh, let's say I had... Uh, all right, you know what? I'm going to got to give you a few more things. So far, I've only told you tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. Well, there's a bunch more. There is, in fact, several categories. Now, I know some of you are, uh, you know, kind of part-time note takers. Today, what I'm about to tell you is a list that you need all the way through spring break and after spring break, and it's a list of things you've got to memorize. I am not going to repeat it for you each day. Okay, so you want to take good notes today and save them. If you're one of the kids that hasn't been doing that, don't just think, oh yeah, sure, I don't have to take notes. You're not going to remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Okay, that I do because I've been teaching this a long time, but you're going to have to look these up. So take good notes. Notes, notes that are quality enough that you can look back at them when you're studying for your tests. You can use these for quite a while. All right, and there's several categories. So if I were you, I'd divide your notes sheet up into uh, a few parts. You don't know how big the parts are, but uh, I'll tell you each category as we come to it. This one are, is called quotient. These are called quotients. Why is this called a quotient? Do you know what quotient even means? Does anybody know what the word quotient means? If not, you're losing a point on the ACT because that's a word you're supposed to know for the ACT. Yes? Quotient means divide. Yeah. 
What's product mean? Let's multiply. Okay, quotient isn't used as much, but quotient is just like product. It's one of those words that means a math function. Quotient means divide. Do you see how it's dividing? You see why this is a quotient then? All right. So this is one of the quotient identities. The general topic of this is identities. And basically, identities are things that are equal. You know, this guy, like Clark Kent, is Superman. That's his alternate identity. Okay? These are equal. This tangent is sine over cosine. All right. So if you're going to label this, I guess I could call the whole thing identities. And there's four kinds of identities. The quotient identities are the ones I'm going to start with. There's another quotient identity that's related. Do you remember that every function has a sister function? And I call them the what? Flippin' sisters. So take a wild guess what the cotangent is equal to. Cosine theta over sine theta. Because cotangent is just an exact flip of the one right above it. Wherever you see cotangent, you can put cosine over sine. Those two are called quotient identities. There's a whole bunch of another category. Mr. W, you can shut the door, please, because those guys are being a little loud in the hallway there. Um, this next category are going to be called the Pythagorean. Sounds like the Pythagorean theorem a little bit, right? Where a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, well, if you make a circle and you make a triangle that goes like this, if your circle is a circle with a unit, uh, this unit circle, sorry, so it has a radius of 1, then the radius is 1, this is x, and this is y. Is that all making sense to you? I've got a triangle here where I've got x and y and 1. Okay. Now, do you get since a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that x squared plus y squared would equal 1 squared? Does that follow? Then, logically, if sines y, remember this, sine y, cosine x, if sine's y, this is really sine. And this is really cosine. So then, do you get that sine squared plus of theta, sorry. This is how you say this whole thing squared. You don't put like this and then you say squared. It's not like that. You put the squared in front of the little uh, theta. Sine squared theta plus I bet you could finish it from here. What's next? Cosine squared. Cosine squared theta is equal to... It was this squared plus this squared equals that squared. So just finish the pattern. 1 squared, which is 1. There. So sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Now, if this was simpler and it was like 2 plus 3 equals 5, wouldn't it also be true that 5 minus 3 is equal to 2? And 5 minus 2 is equal to 3? See what I mean? There's a whole family of things that can come from that. So same idea. If sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, then it's also true. If I want to, I can say sine squared by itself would have to be what? Act like you're subtracting this from both sides. One minus cosine squared. Now you don't need to write all of those down because there's almost an infinite number of ways you could solve this thing. Do you get you could solve it for sine like I just did, or you could solve it for cosine and say cosine is one minus sine squared. Again, if I wanted to know what cosine was, it would be 1 minus sine squared. If I want to know what sine squared is, I could say 1 minus cosine squared. All right. So that little factoid right there can give you a whole bunch of things. 
So if you ever see a 1 in an equation, you can substitute it for sine squared plus cosine squared. It's true. It's just a fact you can use from now on. So if that's really equal to 1, do you get that 1 plus 2 equals 3? Do you get that sine squared plus cosine squared plus 2 equals 3? See what I did there? You can blow away your elementary school teacher. Go back and tell her that, you know what? You taught me that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Maybe you could even change it to that because it's even simpler, right? Well, we learned that sine squared plus cosine squared plus 1 is equal to 2. It's true. Okay. So that's one of your Pythagorean ones, the blue one there. And I'm just kind of showing you how you might use it. Here's another one of your Pythagoreans. Would you agree that on any equation, and this is an equation, that you can multiply or divide by anything you want as long as you do it to everything? Like if you decide you want to take an equation and divide everything by 3, you can do that. Okay. Well, we don't want to divide by 3, but we want to divide everything by the other functions that are out there. Like, for instance, what if I divide everything by sine squared? What is sine squared divided by sine squared? cancels but it doesn't just go away it equals what one plus I just told you a minute ago what's cosine squared over sine squared cotangent squared and that's what's one over sine squared oh I haven't touched that one yet but you can do it think about it nope sine Flipping, it's flipping, right? Cosecant. It's flipping. One over something means you flip it, right? So that's cosecant. All right. The blue one here was your first Pythagorean. This is your second th Pythagorean. And we have some dumb little ways for you to memorize this that will help. The one with the coat is cozy. We can relate to that in Minnesota. If you have a coat, you can be nice and cozy warm or the other people are freezing to death. All right. The one with the coat, it's cozy. I need a theta in there. I just noticed. Technically, any of these functions without an angle mean nothing. S-I-N means nothing in math. But sine of theta means something. Okay. So, here's your second of the big three. And the third one would happen by me taking this original instead of dividing by sine everywhere, take a guess. Divide by cosine everywhere. And if I divide this thing by cosine everywhere, what's sine over cosine? Yep. Sine over cosine, you knew before, right here, is tangent. So that's tangent squared plus, and what's cosine over cosine? 1 equals, what's 1 over cosine squared? Yeah, the flipping sister of cosine, which is secant. All right, that's the third one right there, the third Pythagorean one. These are the ones that have squareds in them, and it makes sense, Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and it makes sense that these all have squares in them then. Tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. Now, I gave you a nifty little saying for this one. The one with the coat is cozy. The one with the tan is what we seek. It is true that in our culture, tan is considered a good thing, good enough that people are actually willing to spray themselves with stuff so that they look tan, or... Just go out in the sun to lay out there and tan. Okay. It's interesting. I think 
our, our, our country swings on a pendulum, and not just our country, our whole, the whole world swings on a pendulum. In the old days, it was actually not considered attractive to be tan. It was considered like, well, even the, the sort of a sign that you were in the, the working class. You were stuck outside all the time. And the people who were lily white skin was like the ultimate, for a person who has white skin, was the ultimate, like, like that was the most beautiful. So with that, without any tan. And then we shifted for a while there. It was like tan was really in. And then all of a sudden tan was bad again because that meant that you were burning yourself in the sun, which means you might get skin cancer someday. And then we've gone so far the other way that people are like slathering on so much like lotion to keep themselves from getting tan because they're afraid of getting burned that actually people are not getting enough sunlight through to their skin to make enough vitamin D. People are actually having major problems with vitamin D deficiency because... They don't get sun through to their skin, so they don't get vitamin D. So anyway, you can go too far in either direction. You don't want to be like roasting yourself out there so you get skin cancer. If you have too much sun exposure. I saw one really dramatic example. This trucker. He would always drive uh, with the window down. So left side of his face would get sunlight. Right side of his face wouldn't. Think about that. If you have the window down, you get the sun shining in on you. And, uh, and it was just amazing as the guy got older. The, the side of his face that got tons of sun exposure, he never put anything on to, you know, like protect himself at all. And it was like weathered on one side and like not on the other. Isn't that crazy? Just from the sun exposure. So there's a happy medium in there somewhere. You don't want to have to protect yourself from bubble wrap when you go outside. Okay, so you have three Pythagoreans now. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And one with the coat is cozy, and the one with the tan is what we seek. All right, so those are the three big Pythagoreans. Okay, we've got quotient kind, which are these two, which basically means divide, right? So this one and this one, which is tangent and cotangent. Then we got Pythagoreans. we got three of them. This one, this one, and this one. And now we move on to the next section, which is, let me look. I don't want to leave any out. Uh, let's do the reciprocal ones. These will be another set of easy ones. Reciprocal. The reciprocals are just the flipping sisters. You already know them. So sine of an angle could be replaced with 1 over what? Sine goes with something, you know that, but do you get that it's 1 over that other function? 1 over cosecant. That also goes for squared. I don't want you to have to rewrite these all twice, but if this was sine squared, it would be 1 over cosecant squared. You can square it on both sides and it works. Yes, sir? Yes, these are all, the whole topic for the whole day is identities. There's four kinds of identities. These are the reciprocal identities. So wherever you see a sine theta, wherever you want from now on, if it helps you, you can put in 1 over cosecant. Why would that ever help you? Because what if you were doing, here's, let's say this is the problem. Problem A on your worksheet. Let's say it's cosecant times sine. Do you get out of the handy to take the sine out? I'm going to rewrite the cosecant here. And instead, put 1 over cosecant. Because what's going to happen now? Come on, what's going to happen now? Focus. Some of you aren't even looking at the board. They are going to cancel, and what's the answer? Not 0. 1. So this problem, cosecant times sine, would equal 1. Yes. Yes, I can move the board up. So here is just an example problem. This blue problem is an example problem where I had cosecant times sine and I replaced sine with 1 over cosecant because that's the new thing for the day is these replacements, substitutions. So instead of sine, I know that that's, I could be replaced with this flipping sister, 1 over cosecant. Okay, so that's the red one is one of our reciprocal functions. Now let's get another reciprocal function. You should be able to do this without me. What's the next one? Cosine of what, to keep consistent, theta, is equal to what? 
one over secant. Good. That's the second one. I think the third one is tangent of theta is one over cotangent. Good. And we could rewrite all of them the opposite way and say cosecant is one over sine, secant is one over cosine, and cotangent is one over tangent. But I feel like that's just like obvious. To me it is anyway, that if this one's equal to one over that one, then it goes the other way too. If you had cosecant, you could replace that with one over sine. So again, I don't think you should have to rewrite that and make three more of them because they all kind of logically are the flip of each other. It goes vice versa. Okay. That's reciprocal functions. And now the last category. The fourth category. Last one for today. There's a few more after this, but um, and this is going to last us for a while. Like tomorrow, uh, you don't have to learn much. You just have to learn how to use these. Okay. So the last kind is odd and even. The odd and even identities. Okay, let's talk about those for a second. Do you remember that x squared looks like this? Was that considered even or odd? It's even. And that's this, which was x to the third, was considered odd, right? Do you remember why? It's because if you put in... I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, talk about that. So, the odd even identities are trying to get at this idea. If that spot right there, it looks kind of like it could be, if this is a true quadratic, maybe it's like 2 comma 4, because you put in 2 and then you square it and you get 4. And then this one would be negative 2 comma 4, right? Remember how that worked? And then over here, if this had a spot on it of like uh, 2 comma 8, then this over here would have a spot at negative 2, negative 8. Try and explain why these next ones work the way they work. Okay. So if you look at the x. Oh, and one more, one more important fact. Do you remember on the odd and even rules? Do you remember the odd rule was that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x? That's odd. It has negatives on both sides. Remember that? And how about the even rule? It's kind of like a little review for the final. The even rule is, okay, let me think. Evens, you still start with f of negative x. And what did you get that was different? F of x. Okay. Now let's look at this for a second. What is this saying? It's saying that on an even function, that if you put in x or you put in negative x, that you will get the same answer for y. Because f of x is like y, right? So you can stick in x or negative x. Here's the x. Here's the negative x. And look, I got the same thing. I got 4 in both cases. All right. So do you get how that then goes with sine? Because sine is an even function. Let's talk about that. Here's sine. I'm going to do sine on the other side here. I'm, I'm actually wrong. I just said sine was even. That's not even. Okay. If you focus in on this is sine. It goes, you know, it goes right through the origin. It goes in both directions. Look at this. From here to here. If I just cut out this wedge right here, does it look even or does it look odd to you? Is that an even or odd function? It's an odd function. Why? Because, look, it looks more like this 
if you have a spot here, you reflect through the origin, there'll be a spot here like it. Remember that feel? Okay, so sine's an odd function. Sine's odd. And we'll tell you what that means in a second. Okay, how about cosine? Is cosine on the odd team or the even team? What's your guess? All right, and let's look at the picture of cosine for a second. Remember cosine? Cosine starts at 1, and it makes a valley like this. But then if I extend it, do you get how I did not draw that very beautifully? Do you get how this one is a perfect reflection across this axis? Do you get how sine, or sorry, cosine is even? It makes sense because there's like what's here is exactly straight across there. Okay, so cosine's even. How about tangent? Tangent on the even or the odd team? Remember how tangent looks? There's tangent. Now what do you think? Even or odd? Definitely on the odd team. Uh, tangent. So tangent's on the odd team. Sine's on the odd team. Cosine's on the even team. All right. Well, that leads us to these three little identities that you have to memorize. And I think that'll help you to keep straight. Sine and tangent go together, and cosine's different. Do you remember on the, on the other ones where we were going like this? You remember how sine and tangent were the same and cosine was different when we were doing the inverse, guys? It's kind of like the two are ganging up on the one. Okay. So, I want you to write this. Sine of negative x. Oh, no, negative on the inside, sorry. It's just like this rule right here. Sine of negative x. Cosine of negative x. And tangent. I'm only writing them in that order because that's the order you learned them in in the first place. And it's so katoa. And anyway. If you do sine of negative x, you do the opposite number. Do you get regular sine of x? Okay, sine is an odd one. Look at this rule, see? We have a negative on the inside. It's got a negative there. Negative sine of x. Okay, cosine. We just determined that sine and tangent are on the same team. So I'm skipping over cosine for now. And sine and tangent are on the same team. They do the same thing. So negative tangent of x. And the cosine is the one that's different. Cosine of negative x is an even. So when you do it with the negative x, you do it without the negative on this one. Just cosine of x. All right, so here's the three. I could have just said, here they are, memorize them. But I don't want to be that guy. I want to try to explain why they were that way. Now, if you want to think of it this way, do you see that there's negatives on each side of the equal sign in every spot except one? To me, that's a powerful way to memorize it. Every single one of these things has a negative sign. See, I'll, I'll make them jump out at you here. Negative, 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 and there's one glaring spot that doesn't have a negative. If you can just remember that cosine is the one that's different. See what I'm saying? This is the one spot that doesn't have a negative right here. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean for you in class today? A typical problem that's going to use this is going to go something like this. They'll say, uh, Sine of negative x over cosine of x. And then you say to yourself, well, self, I can replace sine of negative x with negative sine of x. 
Why is that good? Well, let me see. Negative sine of x over cosine of x. And if your goal is to simplify things, you can simplify this down to just one thing then. Anybody see it? Negative tangent, because sine over cosine is tangent, remember? Negative tangent of x. So here would be the problem. Here would be the answer. Because I knew from one of these properties, these identities, was that sine of negative x would be equal to negative sine of x. I was able to do that swap right there. Okay. Now, you've got the general idea. You're doing substitution. It's sort of like if I see the number, the fraction 1 half, you guys have known for a long time, if you're doing it on a calculator, you could substitute 0.5, right? It just makes it easier, right? That's the same exact thing that you're doing on your homework today. You're going to see something and you go, okay, what can I pull out of this and replace it with something that's equal to it, but will make it work better. So let's do some together. Everybody find the worksheet. 5.1.1. I'll pause for a second while you do. Okay. Now it's important for you to know that these are challenging because you don't want to think, oh, I totally don't get this. If you get stuck on a problem. I totally get this, and yet I will get stuck on a problem. Because I'll, I, they don't just have automatic, like, oh, you do this. You've got to think it through, and you've got to try things. Can you put that away? Thank you. Uh, you've got to try things. You've got to, you know, try three or four things sometimes to make it work. All right, so this first one, just because you don't know right away what to do, don't think, oh, I don't get it. You just haven't tried enough things yet. There's... A whole bunch of things on that sheet I just gave you. A whole bunch of those identities. Could you, wasn't there a tangent? Wasn't there like quite a few things that were equal to tangent? Like 1 over cotangent? Or what's tangent again? What over what? Sine over cosine? Ooh, that one looks like a good idea. You see what I'm saying? You can think of all the things that tangent could be. Tangent of x could be, uh, let me think, could I do negative tangent of x? You know, one of those kind? Or could I do a you know, is it like one of those Pythagorean? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay, so here's how you kind of narrow it down. If you see a squared like this, you know it's got to be one of those, uh, you know, sine squared plus cosine squared deals. Okay, those are the Pythagoreans. If you see a negative in it like this, see? Negative cosecant, cosecant of negative x, that's got to be one of those odd even functions. Then you go to your sheet, you look up odd evens, and you find what could I possibly swap. Now, wait a minute, you might say, you never told us the cosecant ones because they're the exact same thing as their sister function. So, instead of cosecant, you could do same kind of rule. What goes with cosecant? Sine, the flipping sister of it. So it has the same rules as, as sine does. If you had sine of negative x, do you get you could have replaced that with negative sine of x that's on your sheet? It's that same kind of rule, except it works for cosecant, too. Cosecant is just like sine. They're sisters. So CSC of negative x would be, act just like sine. It would have a negative in front of it. The only one that was different was cosine, and cosine didn't have a negative at the end. Remember? Okay, so basically, I just gave you a hint there for number 8 that you should replace cosecant with negative sine of x. Let's continue with number 8 since we're on that one. So now you have, you rewrite this and you say sine of x. I should actually scroll this thing. I told you you could replace this with negative cosecant of x. Okay, so then sine of x times negative cosecant of x equals negative 1. 
but that's not making things cancel. And Mr. Server said we want to try to get things to cancel. So can you think of any other substitution I could do that would make things cancel for me? Yes, sir. What is 1 over sine? So you're saying negative cosecant I could replace with 1 over sine because cosecant is 1 over sine. You're right. So I'm going to bring this straight down. And this cosecant that was negative cosecant, do you get, since cosecant is the same as 1 over sine, I can replace that with negative 1 over sine of x. Did that get something to cancel now? Aha! This canceled. Sine is over 1, right? So it's on the top. This one's on the bottom. That can cancel that. Look at that. It comes out to negative 1 equals negative 1. Isn't that neato? What's the point? We're supposed to be proving that these things are true. Okay? See how this is a statement of, like, truth? It says this equals this. And you're trying to prove that it's really true. Do you get if I can simplify it down to negative 1 is equal to negative 1 that I proved that it's true? Because you can't argue that negative 1 isn't the same as negative 1. They're the same thing. All right. So there's number 8. Let's, while it's on the board here, let's look at number 7. It takes trial and error. And one of the nice things about having an iPad for this is you can try something, and then it doesn't work. You just erase it with a few touches, and it's a completely clean sheet of paper. Kids used to have to go through like tons of erasing, and then rewriting, and then erase it again, and then rewrite it, and it gets all messy. It is going to stay nice and clean. All right, so who's got an idea? What could I replace with what up here on number 7? Yes. Sine over cosine. I like it. All right. So if I replace this tangent with sine over cosine, and I'm timesing by sine x, then I'm adding cosine x equals secant x. Now, can you do another swap somewhere? What else can you swap? Pull out something, put in something for it. Yes. Wait a minute. Oh, secant is 1 over cosine. So you want me to replace the secant here with 1 over cosine. All things that are true. It isn't just like automatically apparent, like, okay, is this, is this done yet? No. Yes. Uh, in a proof, let me just clarify something. Let me look at the top of the page here. Can I see it on somebody else's iPad, like the top of the page? Because I, if I scroll down, I won't. Yeah, prove each of these things. Okay. In a proof, I just broke a rule, and I got to undo it. I apologize. I just forgot this is proving. In proofs, you can either mess with the left side or the right side, but you can't mess with both sides. I'm supposed to prove it equals secant. I can't change secant. Secant's got to stay. See how on this side I, I didn't break that rule? Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. It stayed the same the whole time. You've got to keep one of your sides the same. Usually you keep the right-hand side the same. So, see, I'm keeping secant the same. I apologize. So now we got to start over again. Just not totally over again, but we can't do that swap that somebody has suggested. Do you get that there's a sine times a sine in this problem? What does that make? Sine squared. Let's do that. Sine squared of x over cosine x plus cosine x. And again, we can keep this the same. Now, there's cosines in both of those. It seems like I should be able to factor those out. 
somehow. Do you get how there's a cosine in both of them? Yes. Yes, it does matter. That's a very important plus right there. Because if this was being multiplied right now, I could just cancel them. See what I mean? Because one's on the bottom, one's on the top. I wish I could just cancel them, but it's not quite that easy. All right. If there are cosines in both of them, I should be able to factor those out. Uh, or I could change one of them to like, okay, cosine could be 1 over secant. And the good part about that would be that I'd have secant all of a sudden, and I'm answer supposed to have a secant in it. See what I mean? So maybe I should change this cosine into 1 over secant. Don't, don't do it yet. I'm just thinking. And if I put change this cosine into a 1 over secant, then I could, it's a fraction over a fraction. See, it's a fraction here over another fraction, which means I could flip and multiply it, and all of a sudden I have a secant on top. All right. This is the part where usually people are like, oh, crap. And I want to remind you of, this is a saying from Thomas Edison. Nearly every man who develops an idea works at it up to the point where it looks impossible and then gets discouraged. That's not the place to become discouraged. In other words, you got it this far. You don't want to just go, I give up. One of the reasons? We're not going to just post the answers for you. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to see what the answer is. Because you got to work through it. you got to try to find that answer. Now, that being said, I only have seven minutes left in class, and I don't want to be doing this problem for the rest of the hour. I'm going to leave it right there. I've partially done this for you. Let's see if you can finish it at home later. Clear your mind. Maybe only two people will figure it out, and that's all right. Do I expect you to have all your homework perfect? No. When I grade homework, I typically take the two answers that they do give you, and you should hopefully check those. And I take one other easy one that I do. One of the points is just see, you know, if you can, did you try every problem? So do I expect all these to be perfect? No. I know if I get stuck on some of these, you're going to get stuck on some of these. All right, I got to move on to this next kind which is different. They're simplifying problems. If I, if I can get this one done, this whole side will equal secant. And it is true. We're not, none of these are like false or does not work or impossible. They'll all work if you do it right. And maybe we started wrong. Maybe we shouldn't have like changed this to sine over cosine in the first place. That was just somebody's suggestion. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. So there's, it's very possible that you have to go a completely different way with this. All right. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to just go on to the next kind. So with, again, about five minutes left here. What does simplify mean? Simplify means you get the expression simplified down and usually you can get it down to just one thing. Like the answer to this one might be 2. Or the answer to this one might be sine of y. Okay? So you simplify it as far as you can, and it usually comes out to one function. Like some, sometimes we have really impressive ones where they're like really complicated looking, and they simplify down to 1 or tangent or 0. Okay? So let's do this one. Secant. Who knows something from the sheet? that's equal to secant. Secant's 1 over, 1 over what? Cosine, right? All right. And then who's got a smart substitution for cotangent? Cotangent is kind of like tangent. Tangent sine over cosine, so it's cosine over sine. 
get those two substitutions. Now, why was that a smart way to go? It usually comes down to canceling. Do you see the canceling that can happen now? Okay. Cancels, cancels. And was it, what am I left with? One over sine. Is that good enough? No, because you can get it even simpler. One over sine is close, but what's one over sine? Done. If you can get it down to a single function, you know you're done. Okay, cotangent. Probably that uh, quotient one. Cotangent is what over what? Cosine over sine. Oh, and that's going to work really easy, because then I, sorry, or I have a sign here already, and that's over 1. So, yeah, some of these are really easy. So we get some easy ones. We get some hard ones. Don't freak out if there's some hard problems. From your experience with Marzano-style tests, are they all hard problems? No. There's going to be some hard ones. And if you want to get better than a C on this next test, you'll need to be able to figure out some hard ones. But if you can get three out of four easy ones right, then you'll be able to get the, the C at least. And then what you're trying for is two out of four on the hard ones, and you get a B. So if you can get half of the hard ones right on this next test, you can still be at a B, which I was telling you would be impressive enough on some of these tests. All right. Yes. We'll finish it. Cancels, cancels, you tell me. What does it come out to? Yeah, this comes out to cosine. And they're just throwing different letters in here to show you that it doesn't have to always be theta. This last problem was y, now we're using u, so it's actually cosine of u. If you can get it down to one function, you know you did it well enough. Okay, so it's good for you to see that these can be hard enough that you can work on one for five minutes and still, maybe ten minutes, and still be, like, not even close to the answer. That is reality on these, and that's why these tests are tough. Okay. So let's look at this assignment and see if there's, uh, if it's of reasonable size. Uh, it's reasonable, but not incredibly reasonable. Um, some of these are actually pretty nice at the end. So, uh, Let's have you skip problems uh, five and fifteen. Problems five and fifteen. Let's cut it down a little bit for you. Now you have tonight to do this, and there's more stuff coming tomorrow. But it's kind of a review day tomorrow, so don't like feel like. If you're not mastering this tonight, it's okay. You've got time. You do have a test coming on this, but it's not until after spring break. Okay? But you also got to factor in you're going to forget a lot over spring break probably. So, All right. Here's your homework. That's all I have for you for today. Tomorrow we'll come back at it, and you'll feel a little smarter uh, when you, after a few minutes of practicing tomorrow. You'll be getting this a lot better than you're getting it right now.